know <laughs> that I proved him wrong. So, And we will not be mentioning any company names to protect you mm-hmm. and protect this interview from not going down. With that being said, when did you... So your role, you said it's an entry-level role and it's a rotational program. Mm-hmm. So how many... So what was the first rotation that you did? Incident response. Okay. Let's talk about that because... I love IR. You do. IR is a, it's a rush. It's especially it depends too. Like if you're in a place where like something comes in and, and like the soccer something can't handle it, like it's perfect. Mm-hmm. So was your IR set up like I don't know if you guys had like maybe either internal sock or outsource sock, or you guys work with the sock and then or you work as a sock and do IR. Like how was the IR set up for you? Um, it may be the case in other locations with the company, but, um, here in Dallas, the Dallas office is very, very small. Like the cybersecurity team as a whole, there's probably only about a dozen of us. Wow. Very lean. Yeah. So, um, there was, there's none of the outsourcing or like, it is literally like just us. Okay. So yeah, it's always like a, uh, it's like a fire team then, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's like everything's like together. Mm -hmm. So how was that experience for you? Um, honestly, it was, it was better than what I, I don't, I don't really know what I was anticipating, but, um, I think having like a, a smaller team that's like more close knit, um, worked out. It can, I mean, it's a double edged story because you have people that don't really ever come into the office. So then you're like kind of, I've been in there alone sometimes. Um, but I think it built the connections more like my coworkers, all of them are like my mentors. They have no problems helping me with a problem or a question. And I think that may have been harder to achieve at a location where the office is like a lot larger Uh, because with the program, we all, we all start at the same time, like everyone else who's on the rotational program. Um, And I talk to them in the different locations. Like I, I have um, friends in the Chicago office or in the Boston office and, um, It just seems like their experience is different. Everyone's having a good experience, but it seems like that one-on-one and like strong connection build isn't, isn't as present in the bigger locations. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you probably answered this already, but do you feel that being hybrid has actually helped you out early on in your career versus just being straight remote? Because we see a lot of young people, I don't want to say kids, I'm sorry, young adults, Mm -hmm. they want to be remote, but, and this comes from a person that, of course, yeah, I was doing help desk, like my first couple of years. However, we were always in office, so you are able to put the call on mute, go tap on somebody's shoulder and ask them something. Mm -hmm. Or when I was, got my first couple of sock jobs, we was all there in person. Or, well, some of the team was remote, but they were always quick to respond. But you can get more growth that way. And not only that, I'm going to put you on a little secret talk about this all the time visibility you get visibility sometimes when the leaders come through and they see that you're at the office Mm -hmm. and some people don't know that because they a lot of people think that if i'm very good at my job and i just work and go home that means i will get the promotion i'm here to tell you that is not true so i'm here to tell you that hey that sounds good but you're gonna have to network you're gonna have to be visible so people can know who you are and you gotta be your biggest champion on things that you've accomplished Mm -hmm. but i wanted to ask you about that just working uh, that's helping you out and at a high level can you talk about anything like any new things that maybe you learned about cyber that you possibly that school or the boot camp didn't prepare you for Um, yeah, so, well, first I 100% agree with the hybrid aspect. Um, yeah, it's nice to work from home, but being in person was really the only way I learned how to use the tools that we use. Like there was, there would be no way that a Zoom call would have helped me be able to learn these tools that I've never heard of before, never seen of before, especially when it, since now I'm on digital forensics, especially when it comes to digital forensics, like there would have just been no way. So to answer your question of like what I've learned um literally everything <laughs> uh i've learned what digital forensics is what it meant i learned like what all goes on in incident response not even just like the technical aspects of things but um the the teamwork aspect yeah. of it communication part of it is yeah. the big one hey do we have what we need what's the update on this mm-hmm. who we need to leak uh who we need to link into this 
incident mm -hmm. because what you what a lot of people don't even know is a lot of times the breach ain't even on your company. It's a company that you work with <laughs> that's got an incident. And now y'all checking them now, making sure none of y'all data is at play. Like what type of effect does it have on you? Like these are all the things that you have to worry about and considering like all the breaches that happen like every week that I'm reading about. Yeah. It's always something small. I want to ask you, because we'll get on uh, the DR side real quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, DF part of uh, DFIR. But when you were doing incident response, what tools were you using? Um, so we, we were using, um, like, well, I don't know if I say ring a bell, but like Axiom, X-Ways, um, we had, there's a tool that one of my coworkers actually developed that we use called Velociraptor or he helped develop it, Velociraptor, um, ASDF. But that's another thing I wanted to say was that at, I'm sure it's different across different companies, but with this company, um, the incident response, like the stuff we, the stuff I was doing with incident response is the exact same stuff I'm doing in digital forensics. It's a little different, but yeah. we're using the same tools. It's a lot of, it's a lot of overlap. I think the only yeah. difference is for digital forensics, you probably have a little bit more time about um, really doing the analysis of yes. whatever the memory or, or something you is, because it could take a while to mm -hmm. get all that and really look through those registries and those processes and seeing exactly what's going on. But mm -hmm. It's a skill set. I think I was telling you that when we first met, I was like, you learning digital forensics is, is a bag. It's a niche bag. Like, <laughs> everybody don't know forensics. I promise you. No, yeah. I'm just, like, learning some other things about forensics, and that's pretty, like, cool. Like, one of my weaknesses about why I didn't get one role was like, hey, I have a, a weakness with forensics, specifically when it comes to Linux. Mm -hmm. So if you can learn Linux, then you already know how to do forensics for that, Windows and any other operating system and then not let alone you know how to do forensics for the cloud you're good to go yeah so th those are the things like when i'm talking to people i am trying to tell them i'll say i, I know you're trying to go chase the money and which we haven't